Yes, I, I guess I'm trying to focus on the surprising and secretive animals found here on Sherborne Brook. And you don't get any more secretive than snakes. I seem to be spending the majority of my adult life looking for snakes and only a tiny percentage of time actually finding them. But they are here and we have proof of it because this photo was sent in by local villager Moira Yip. It's of a grass snake and it was taken right behind me here in these reeds. And why not? I mean, this is a perfect place to find grass snakes. They're very adaptable. They're a lowland species, but they're found in a whole array of different places. The one thing is they are bound to water. We've got some fantastic images here of a grass snake moving through boggy, marshy terrain. And look at that sinuous, serpentine, slithering movement. Very similar to the way that they move across the surface of the water if they're swimming, except then all you would see would be the periscope of their head jutting out from the water and the wake they would leave behind as they move. And the real reason that they're so bound to this habitat is their diet. So a recent study here in England found that 63% of the diet of grass snakes was made up of frogs. The rest was made up of mammals, small birds, and occasionally of fish. So the fate of these two animals is inextricably intertwined. And there is some evidence to suggest that grass snakes are on the decline. It's very, very difficult to button that down, though, because we don't have an accurate population estimate of grass snakes here in the UK. However, just up the road from here in Bybury, there is a study going on with the National Trust. Bybury is just a chocolate box village. And if I know anything from watching Midsummer Murders, it's that a village this perfect has to have a dark secret. But this one doesn't. It's just kind of just as lovely as it looks. It is, though, full of tourists, and there's a lot of footfall there. But in the centre of the village is a flower-rich water meadow, and that is a haven for snakes. I went there the other day with ranger Ellie Castle to find out more. How long have you been studying grass snakes here? So I started back in November last year. So this is my first year, really, um, getting stuck into some snake monitoring, which I'm really enjoying. It's such a great feeling to find a grass snake. So I've got some quite nice pictures from snakes I've seen around here. You just spot those little yellow eyes. All these tourists, if they knew that these fields were full of snakes, would completely lose it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had a few come <laughs> up to me and said, what, what are you looking for? And I said, oh, I'm looking for snakes. And they go, oh, oh. Go, oh, but why are you like that? They're amazing little creatures. And no, some people just don't understand. I think they get a bit of a bad rep sometimes, but they are lovely. Although part of this survey is just going out and wandering, looking for grass snakes, there is one little trick that herpetologists all over the world use to attract reptiles, and that's simply putting down little bits of corrugated iron. Those warm up faster than the surrounding environment, and so reptiles, being so-called cold-blooded, will go underneath to thermoregulate, to suck up some of that warmth. So we wandered around, checking out the, these bits of corrugated iron, and eventually we got lucky. We have tiny a little, little tiny one. juvenile. Look at that. Oh, wow. So it already has the classic bright yellow collar at the back of the head, barring running down the underside. And its eyes are blue. Look at that. It's getting ready to shed its skin. So that was a yearling. It would have hatched out of its egg just last year. This, though, is a mature adult grass snake. And it is a thing to behold. The females are rather larger than the males. They can get to be even bigger than this animal here. And we took the opportunity of having this wonderful rescue snake around to get some close-up shots of the grass snake, because I think they're worth looking at. Looking here at the, dors the ventral sorry, scales of the animal, those are the ones that are primarily used for locomotion. As you move up the animal towards the head, you're going to get the distinctive signs that enable you to tell this apart from our other species of snake. So the yellow collar behind the head. If you were to get close enough to look it in the eye, you'd see a very different eye to the adder, which has a red eye and a vertical slit-shaped pupil, as opposed to the round pupil found on this of uh, the grass snake. Uh, the adder as well is a, a venomous snake. I certainly wouldn't be handling it like this. But grass snakes, you know, they're very timid animals. They're very loath to bite. In fact, what they usually do in defense is to emit a, a rather foul-smelling secretion from their anal glands, which has a smell that, once smelt, 
is never forgotten. In fact, it will be lingering on your clothes for the rest of your life. I, generally speaking, just chuck that T-shirt away because it's never going to get any better. And the last thing they will do, if they really feel threatened, is to feign death. They'll roll onto their back, the mouth sprawls open, the tongue is uh, sprawling alongside the mouth, and any predator that will only take live prey will leave them well alone. So right now, this is the distribution map of uh, <laughs> grass snakes in the UK. The red area is where they're known to occur, not famously in Ireland or in Northern Scotland, certainly not in Shetland, up where Juliana is right now. But let's face it, she's not suffering for a lack of fabulous wildlife.